and we are here, Ball Central Podcast. It is myself and your boy John. What's up? Elijah's taking a PTO week to get himself gathered. You know, very busy man. Had a lot on his plate, so took a week to focus on himself, which is always a good thing. You know, a lot going on in the world, and and it's always you come first. So, shout out to Elijah. Hopefully, your um, recovery slash you know week off does a lot of good for you. So. Facts. I'm gonna miss him though, Phil. I miss. I love talking with Elijah. I love his points, point of views. Because honestly, like, I I do think this podcast is a way to really be attached to the league. Do you know what I mean? Like, I talk to you guys, and like my betting or like you know what I mean perspective. It's not just one sided. It's it's his point of view, your point of view, my point of view. Do you know what I mean? And I try to gather them all. And you know, it's a little sad that we don't get to see him, but I'm happy he's taking care of himself. You know what I mean? Taking a week for him. Right. That's what's up. So, um, just a reminder. Uh, for for our podcast, you can find it on the several platforms: uh, YouTube, Google, Apple, Spotify, and formerly Anchor, aka Spotify for podcasters. Also, the video version can be found on YouTube as well and Spotify. So, if you want to see our faces and not hear just our voices, go down there. And hey, we have a lot to talk about. We are now finally doing NFL prep videos or a podcast. It's about what three or four weeks away. So we're going to do the next three or four weeks like this, NFC Outlook, AFC Outlook, season predictions slash bets, and then we're going to preview week one, the week of the first season. So I'm so that, excited, Phil. Let's get it. Right. So before we start, uh, how are you doing, John? Good. Yeah, I, I definitely want to talk about our weekends. I mean, I, I, I unfortunately had to miss uh, a friend's weekend with Phil and our, our buddies uh, Switch Chat, which uh, nothing but love to you guys, miss you guys. But I had to, I had to shoot this weekend. I had a... Uh, I had a Sweet 16 and I had two band uh, shows that I had to get uh, for photography. So uh, more photos to come on JPM Photo. Uh, I've been been a little bit active, a little not active this summer. But uh, I don't know. It's, it, it, was, it was a good weekend overall, Phil. I mean, I'm, I'm sad I missed out on your the trip. But, I mean, I, I hit some of my shots. So I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy. What about you? How was your weekend? Uh, pretty good. Uh, obviously, you come first, so if you're busy, take care of what you guys do, and then there'll be always be a next trip. We mm-hmm. might be doing a, a New York State Fair trip, like in a couple of weeks. So hey, there's always that as well. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, the the week was pretty good. I got to see Marcos, Hannah, and Walid. Um, Walid got into an encounter with a bee, and he scraped his head out of his knee. No so. way. It didn't sting him, but he tried to move out the way. He fell and scraped his knee. Like oh. it was. It, yeah. So it, bright side, he didn't get stung, but um, his ego and. You know, skin got hurt well, in the process. So, is is he allergic? No, I don't know. Uh, probably not. Big, big. No offense. Big fear for New Yorkers. I don't mean to be like that, but my uncle got stung in the subway, and he had to be rushed to the hospital. It was almost like it was, it was like a huge incident. So, mm-hmm. I mean, like it, it happens, but it's it's crazy. Yeah, glad he didn't get stung. Yeah. Also, I, I was kind of scared to get stung too, just because every single year I get stung at least once by a bee. It hasn't really? happened yet. So, really? Yeah. Okay. All right, Phil. We're on a good streak. We're on a good streak. I like to see it like that. All we're right. on a good streak. Hold on. I mean, it has. Wait. I thought it said it hasn't happened yet, like this year. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I mean, you still got half the year. You know what I mean? But right now we're winning, right? Yeah, and, and it's almost a cold month, so. Okay, so we're we're almost there. I need to survive August and a little bit of September and October, which would be good. You, you, but you love fall, right, Phil? Like, what's your favorite month? Like, what are your season? What's your favorite season? Is it the winter? Because there are no bees, or like probably I'd say summer, fall, spring, winter. Okay, for me it's it's fall, summer, winter, spring. The rain, I'm guessing you like for the spring. I don't like the. It was just, ew. and then like in Casanova, it's basically winter. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I don't know. It's or, it or place department, whatever you want to call it now. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so. And we have a lot to get into tonight, so let's get started. First of all, we just want to say um, condolences to the Alex Collins family, uh, the NFL running back who played for the Seahawks and the Ravens. Razorbacks and, and Ravens as well, and Razorbacks in college has uh, passed away due to a, a vehicle slash motorcycle incident. So we just want to put our thoughts and prayers out there and condolences to the family and friends of them. Very sad incident. So is that anything you want to? Yeah, that was that. that was a really sad piece of news that we we saw last night. And I mean, I mean, yeah, he, motorcycles are really dangerous. And I mean, we we almost saw Ben Roethlisberger like die after he won a Super Bowl, remember? And like, luckily it it, it worked out. But it's just motorcycles are they're a scary thing. You know what I mean? And I, I'm I'm so sorry for to his family. And like, it's just it's it's really sad. Right before 
football season to see something like this. You know what I mean? Especially for right. someone who brought so much to the game. So he's twenty eight too. Yeah, he's our age. Yeah, he would. He's still <laughs> be playing, honestly. Right. Yeah, so just a reminder, you know, make sure you talk to your loved ones and always, always, you know, with motor with any ve- type of vehicle that can go fast, whether it's a, a motorcycle, car, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, always be safe and be aware of your surroundings. So, hey, okay. okay. and we're gonna move on to from that topic to another one. A little bit of not so good news as well. Um, the blind side, you know, Michael Orr from the former Raven. A former NFL player, he's not retired. He just came up with a, a breaking story that he was b- basically being used to fit hit the family that he was being adopted by or, you know, born, not born into, but, you know, accepted into as their own, like, tool to, for their needs and gains. So very, very sad story. Obviously, a lot of the details are not, are, you know, out yet, but, you know, a good chunk of it is, and who knows if it will get, like, it transformed to a Netflix story or et cetera, et cetera, so... Um, what was your reaction to the news, John? Well, I mean, it's 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 wild, just the sure instinct of it. You know what I mean? Like, but it's also like, I mean, this is this is just unfolding. You know what I mean? So news is keep coming out and keep coming out. And right now, it's not even a lawsuit. It's really just a asking of the courts to do the right thing. You know what I mean? And if the two is comply, the two is comply. And you know what I mean? He just wants his name, image, and likeness of himself basically back anything he would have made off that movie because he didn't make anything off the blind side allegedly so i mean i when when you first hear that like someone's tricked from thinking he was adopted to into a conservatorship you know what i mean like that's just crazy information you know what i mean and then on top of it like i I think he has a, a good case if he ever did go to like a suit because like a conservatorship has to like they have to like really work by guidelines. You know what I mean? And if those guidelines weren't met, I mean, I think he's, he's got a great case, but, uh, and I mean here, they definitely weren't met because he, he didn't see any money from the blind side and it was almost a $300 million movie. And it was, I mean, he really kind of portrayed him badly too. You know what I mean? Because like in the movie, it, it basically says like, he didn't really go through school. So he wasn't really that smart. You know what I mean? And like, that's not really what it's like for him in real life. You know what I mean? Like that was just a over exaggeration of the situation he was coming from. So, uh, I mean, it, it kind of ruins the movie for me. You know what I mean? I, does it ruin for, it for you? Yeah, poor you know Sandra I mean? Bullock. I mean, you know what I mean? It's just like first, first money ball with Brad Pitt and now Sandra Bullock in the blind side. Like this summer is just the, the summer of killing sports movies. Like, and Sandra Bullock did such a good job in that movie. Oh, people were talking about that years afterwards. Just, ah, but. Watch. Yeah, it's just okay. sad. Okay. Hey, but we're here to, you know, we got some other topics that will brighten up the mood as well. Also, something to brighten up the mood. NFL season is right around the corner. So this week's episode or podcast, whatever you want to call it, me and John will be, you know, going through the NFC by division, of course four divisions and giving our outlook or predictions or, and, and talking about how we think this team's off season was and how we think they're going to perform this year. Also with some other bit tidbits of information. So I'm just going to pull up um, a little thing we, I have presented. It's not a graphic, but I, was, I forgot to do the graphic. So we're going to go by, by Google Sheets. Why not? Let me pull it up. So, it's a lot of NFC teams, and a lot of them are looking to make some noise. So, And these are all up. the moves, right? Yep. So basically, obviously not all of them are there, but I did a top three of at team players that, that was very important that they added and teams that left that was very important as well. So, John, where would you like to start first? I'd love to start at the New York Giants, baby. Nothing okay, better. NFC, you know what I mean? Started. Exactly. So, I mean, John, you probably know the move, so. All right, Eight, well. As a Giants fan, let me tell you, I was a huge, like, lover of bringing in uh, Walker and Paris, two big targets for Daniel Jones, and uh, I was really, really sad about Ricky James and uh, Julian Love. I, I mean, those two players were electric for us last year, and uh, I think, I think this team needs to form a little bit stronger than it did from last year. So hopefully, it can it can work the mojo it did. But I mean. I, I like what the Giants did this offseason. I think I think they did improve. You know what I mean? But I don't know. We're still still the start of the year. We're, we're still uh, go through it. I mean, to go to the Eagles next. Uh, 
I'm, I'll just do those two teams. I mean, I, I really like the adding of Swift, although a lot of people don't think he's he's going to um, do much. And I, I really think C.J. Gardner-Johnson leaving is going to hurt them. And maybe Miles Sanders, but I don't know. What do you think, Phil, about this um, division? For the Giants, um, uh, they ended last season with getting blown out by the Eagles in the second round, I believe. Sure. Yeah. Uh, to, to help the defense even more because they have a solid defense already. Linebacker Bobby O, I think, would be very great. Um, not great, but you know, a good addition for them as well. You know, we some, line, linebackers. some linebacker help would be very nice for, for that uh, Giants team. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get you get uh, probably is going to be the main weapon in that offense besides Barkley and Waller. Uh, Paris Campbell, I don't think he's the best option, but I think it's a nice depth piece. I still yep. think they they need a solid, reliable wide receiver to be you know even more dangerous what they already are. Um, Julian Love at safety, also a big loss for their defense. Very, very reliable last year. Richie James, wide receiver, losing some depth at wide receiver. Uh, Nick Gates, I believe, was an offensive tackle. So Yeah, he was. Yeah, so, I mean, I feel like maybe some all, some more O-line help and maybe a, a reliable number one option at wide receiver probably get things even better for the Giants. But all that matters is they get over seven and a half wins. And Phil, I mean, I mean, for you, especially to to help you with that seven and a half win threshold, I think their third round draft pick uh, out of Tennessee really is going to help them at wide receiver depth. I don't want to call them our wide receiver one yet. You know what I mean? We're gonna we're gonna mums the word on this, but I think I think adding him was a, a big piece to pushing down the ball down the field this year. So, and uh, for the Eagles, uh, obviously your NFC champions. They're they're defending NFC champions. Sure. Uh, tough game against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl last year. I think was they said they were a play away the holding call, obviously. Um, so in the offseason, they lost Hardgrave, huge loss to their defense. One of the best defensive tackles in the league. CJ Gardner Johnson stayed for one year at safety, then dipped. Sadly got injured for the year at Detroit, so he will not be playing this season. Uh, Miles Sanders, I don't think it was too big of a loss because they got what they got swift in return. They they love their depth at running back anyway, so I don't think he was a tool. And plus, they barely used the guy anyway, so I don't think it's a huge loss for them. But they do add their defense as well for the, with their loss of defense. Greedy Williams at cornerback, I think, would be a great addition because they, they already have big play slay. Uh, who, what, what was the cornerback they got from the Giants? The Bradbury, Bradbury, and Greedy Williams. I think that'd be a great the secondary. Uh, team and for some veteran leadership and some help with Hertz, Marcus Mariota. It's always good to have a vet in your locker room. I think Marcus Mariota has been through a lot. It'll be very helpful to um, j- um, to Jalen Hurts. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, I I I, I did the first te- teams and then stop because I think yeah. Phil. I mean, I don't know how you feel about this division, but I think it's really going to come down to these two teams. I know the Cowboys had a better record than the Giants last Ooh. year, but I think it's going to come down to these two teams. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be like that. I don't mean to throw <laughs> the Cowboys under the bus, but wait until we get to predict. So I'll, do, I'll do the next two teams. Um, okay. So so let's start with the one that we don't we think is probably going to be in last place, to be honest, the mm-hmm. Commanders or the Redskins, whatever you want to call them, because you know people are fighting for that. Um, this offseason, they, they lost t- Tyler Heineke. You know, that one of their beloved QBs who was with Wentz, both Wentz and Heineken are both out. So they're relying on rookie, uh, what's his name? Sam Howell and uh, Jacoby Brissett, I believe. Jacoby Brissett. Yeah. So they, they basically switched up the quarterback room. We'll see how it works out for them. They also lost running back J- JD McKissick, you know, very good weapon, but he moved on as well. And Cole Holcomb, I believe, was offensive line or defensive line as well. So, I mean, but they did add Andrew Wiley to help that um, O-line shore up and Cody Barton, at linebacker. So, I mean, they didn't have, see much of um, – what's his name? Uh, what's the, uh, Chase Young last year due to injury. So adding Cody Barton to the defense, who's very, a little bit underrated because they, they did have a good run his rookie year but then fell off after he missed time. But just showing up the defense can help very well. And Andrew Wiley, it's always good to have O-line in the NFL because there's a lot of good defensive players, especially on the line and edges in the NFL. So adding O-line depth never hurts. But, yeah, I do think this team will probably finish last in the division. John, how do you feel about the Commanders? How do I feel about the the Washington football team or the – I mean, the Commanders or – I mean, I'm interested. I I, I think they are a a bare-knuckle – team i think they're a team no matter what that you predict i mean you can predict them to come in last you can predict them to come in first i mean 
it doesn't matter. I, they're they're gonna either disappoint or impress you. It's they're a team I, I I can't put my finger on. I mean, like the Giants beat them, you know what I mean? But then like they beat the Cowboys, you know what I mean? So it's just like, I mean, I think Phil, who is the who's the coach that they added? Who's their offensive coordinator? I think that's their biggest. Yeah, the Eric Bieniemy. Eric Bieniemy. Thank you. Sorry, it's just was it was on the top of my head forever. I was we, I entered the Washington chat and I just wanted to say Eric Bieniemy's name five times fast, but I just. I couldn't get it off my, the top of my head. But, yeah, so, I mean, I think Eric Bieniemy is, is going to really bring some to this offense. And, like, I think that defense, uh, the only thing that was wrong with it was injuries. You know what I mean? So, coming into a new season and if you could stay kind of healthy, you know what I mean? Like, this might be a scary team. This might – you know what I mean? Like, we don't know yet. Washington hasn't really come to play. So, I mean, but this might be a scary team. That they, Their defense has been good and it's been horrible. So, it's – I, I don't know what's going to happen to this team, but I think I think the Redskins might impress us on some games. Right. And then the last team we're talking about before we make our prediction for the division, a bold one bold prediction, um, the Cowboys. Uh, they went They're through a lot. I, I mean, I forget too sometimes. So. Sorry, my bad. My bad. <laughs> um, yeah, so they had um, they had a very tumultuous offseason. Uh, they finally paid their best player, a.k.a. best lineman, Zach Martin, at right guard, they paid him finally, so he deserves to get paid. One, he's probably arguably the best offensive lineman in the league, arguably. But uh, uh, he, he, yes, he, he's a top three. He's a top three. I don't know. I play, ar- arguably, he's, arguably, he's, he's also played center, which I mean, arguably, who? I mean, I, if it would, uh, the, another reason I'm annoyed that the blind side got like rocked this week, Phil, was because like it's a hit to the offensive lineman community. It, yeah. it was honestly the first and only movie that was made about an offensive lineman. One of the most boring, not boring positions, but like it, it the, starting off with the Lawrence Taylor like thing and talking about how a left tackle, like really like you have to think about what you need in a left tackle. You know what I mean? Like it. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think there's some left tackles that might be better than Martin, but I mean, yeah, I get where you're coming from. He's definitely top three. Sorry about yeah. that. Um, they lost some players, some no very notable players. Connor McGovern, they lost a guard, a very talented guard. Yeah. Uh, they lost Zeke, who some say are, is out of his prime. Right? We don't know for sure. He's he's healthy, so we'll see how he performs. He's a Patriot now, so we'll see exactly how he performs. I think he'll be a good third down back, or sorry, third down back in a goal line player. So we'll see how that turns out. And they lost a uh, very talented uh, number eighty six Dalton Schultz to the Texans as well. But did they get a replacement for him and Luke Schooner? Or Shoemaker, I forgot how to say his name, but in the draft to replace him, a lot of high hopes for him. Uh, they added defensive help as well to help Trayvon Diggs out and Stefan Gilmore, Gilly Lock, former Colt and Patriot. And they added another wide receiver to help out um, CD Lamb because CD Lamb was pretty, I'm pretty sure, was the only wide receiver out there last season for the Cowboys. They added Brandon Cooks, former Texans, Patriots, Saints receiver. So um, for me, I think, you know, busy offseason for the Cowboys. Uh, I do. I still think their offensive line needs help, but uh, no, I that's think my big question for you: Do you think Jerry Jones signs a veteran guard out of camp? Like at, training camp's happening right now. Do you think he before the 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 full roster set does he sign an offensive lineman? He should, to be honest. But will he? No clue. Um, awesome. he should, to be honest. But because I think you only have Tony Pollard there now. There's no. I mean, if you you know Deuce. You know the little short running back. Well, I think they need to shore up their offensive line. But once again, all eyes will be on Dallas because they're such a popular slash hated team in the NFL. Facts. Don't come so for Deuce, Bill. Don't come for Deuce. We don't want that smoke, Deuce. Let me <laughs> let me tell you, that dude's gonna he's gonna. We're the same height as Deuce. No, no, I get yo, bro. I know, but like, let me tell you something. That dude's he's gonna pop off in the end. He plays for America's team, Phil. You know what he's I mean? Running, he's, like, he's running back, Kyler Murray. Oh my God. <laughs> How do you feel about the Cowboys this year, John? Honestly, I think they take a hit, and I think they fire their head coach at the end of the year. Is that wrong to say? Is that your hot? Is that your? That's my hot take. That's really one of my hey. hot takes. I I don't mean to be like that as a That's Cowboys fine. fan. I don't mean to be just because like I mean maybe I they they probably do have a good year. I think they're in the mix with the Giants and uh, the the Eagles, but. I think the Giants did get better, and they did address the things they needed to address at corner and at wide receiver. So. I, I think they I think the Giants moved up on the Cowboys. I mean that's also a hot take. I that a lot of Cowboys fans don't agree with probably, but it's I don't know. I I feel I feel bad for the Cowboys. I think Dak deserves more press, and I mean he's not getting it right now. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Um, I think my bold prediction for this division, it's going to be a one player, Dak Prescott. I'm glad you brought him up. I don't think he's going to throw as many interceptions as people think he is. Yes, he's struggling with interceptions right now in training camp, but this is an improved offense from last year. Yes, you use Dalton Schultz, but you get Luke Schoonmaker from the draft. You also add Brandon Cooks to help relieve pressure off of C.D. Lamb. So I think people are expecting Dak to lead the league in interceptions, but I don't know if that's a hot That's crazy. But I don't. I but, think he's gonna maybe maybe between the six and ten range. I don't think it's gonna be. I don't. I don't think it's gonna be a crazy amount like a lot of people are saying. But I think he's gonna. You know, I think it's gonna be. He's, I think he's gonna pass a lot better than what people are expecting this year. So that, that'd be my prediction for the, for a player in the division. And then you said the the coach will be fired by the end of the year. I think so. I don't. I don't know. I don't. Do. You, do you, hey, you, got, you got to stick with it. I mean, the, 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 all right, this is the, one, the number one reason. It's because Cowboy fans are a lot like – like they live and breathe on the Cowboys. You know what I mean? So they have high hopes and they build up their teams. And you know what I mean? Like they they want to go to the Super Bowl and they want to win it. You know what I mean? That's their expectation every single year. And when you set that expectation, I mean, and the coach does not deliver and like the Giants go farther than you in the playoffs because you lost in the first round. It's just like – I mean, I'm not trying to be like that, but like this was a team last year. Remember, Phil, how Dak was out and they were winning anyways, and yet Cowboys fans going, maybe we don't need Dak. You know what I mean? And that's your starting quarterback. You know what I mean? So it's just if you believe in it, mean it. I mean, that's it's crazy. I don't know. I I do I do mean it, but like you never know. I mean, the Cowboys just might come out this year, and I mean, Michael Parsons is not someone to joke about. You know what I mean? Right. But that's my hot take. I think the Cowboys. Fire the head coach. Yeah. So um, let's move on to, you know, let's go NFC West because I think that's a very popular division to talk about. So um, NFC West, uh, let's go down. Let's go the least important to most important. Let's go with Arizona Cardinals, the team expected to be one of the worst teams in the league this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kyler Murray obviously got uh, got injured during the Patriots game last year. So I believe it was a torn ACL or a very, very devastating leg injury. So he'll be missing a good amount of time this year. Um, they lost. They lost D Hop. They lost Rodney Hudson. Shout out to him last week, John. NFL grid. Yep. And they lost JJ Watt. They lost a lot of pieces. Chandler Jones, et cetera, et cetera. Just you know, this this team just got stripped of all its talent as soon as D Hop left. So, but they did add some talent. They added offensive line help and the guard Froholt. I think that's his. I, that's how you pronounce his name. Kazir White to help with the defense at linebacker, and they added former Colts wide receiver Zach Pascal to help with the offense because there's not going to be much of it. It's basically going to be the James Conner show this year, just because it's not a lot to be you know happy about in, in Arizona. So uh, I, I just I see I don't see this team making any noise. I I don't think they'll get they'll get under five wins, maybe five wins most, but I doubt that even. So did they yeah. announce a quarterback? Is it Colt McCoy or is it? I think there's a rookie. I think it's either Colt McCoy or a rookie looking to take this. How do you feel about the Cardinals this year, John? I look it up. I I I don't even think they lost talent. I think they lost huge character members, Phil. Like that's both. <laughs> like I mean, it's like that, and that's how winning teams happen. You know what I mean? Like you bring in people that you know what I mean. Demand it. Have worked towards it. You know what I mean? Like know what it what it is. And when you lose D Hop, JJ Watt, like Rodney Hudson, like I'm. A big offensive line critic, you need a guard. You know what I mean? I know they brought in another guard, and they did help somewhat that offensive line, but it's just like, how many wins is Colt McCoy going to give you? You know what I mean? Like, And, I mean, you never know. I mean, Geno last year stepped in for the Seahawks, and, I mean, we, we, we've we seen it happen where backups take over, and they can they can work, but it's just, I don't know. It's, it's Colt McCoy. Okay. So, I, I don't know. I'm – I'm really – I don't know. Do you want to move to the Seahawks? Yeah, so uh, Seahawks – um, The Seahawks, they had, a, had a, they had a very surprising year last year. A lot of people thought it was taking year, but um, comeback player of the year, uh, Dino Smith led them to the playoffs. I mean, obviously, it, it wasn't a good playoff showing because they got destroyed by the 49ers, but a playoff appearance nonetheless. I uh, see they, they lost Rashad Penny. They lost, I think – uh, Bart, a uh, linebacker, Barton, and they lost Shelby Harris, defensive tackle. So they did lose some depth from running back and defensive tackle. <laughs> Check the chat, John, when you get the chance. Yep. Um, and also they added former Giants safety Julian Love. Uh, they added former, you know, heart and soul of the team, former Legion of Boom leader 
Bobby Wagner, so he's back after still with the Rams. And they added more defense to go off that former Legion of Boom, Draymond Drones, and the defensive lineman category. So, uh, also, they added um, wide receiver as well in the draft. Uh, what's the name? Jackson S- Smith and Jigbo. So, I think uh, – I don't think – see. The Seahawks will have an amazing year, but I think they'll be one of the middle of the pack teams that can surprise people, in my opinion. Because I don't think, I think last year was kind of a fluke year, but you they have the good Rams come back in this in this division. Uh, I have no clue to be honest. I mean, I mean, if, if we're being a hundred percent, I know we haven't even gotten to the Rams or San Francisco, but San Francisco is probably the front runner. Right? Is are they not? Yeah. So yeah, so I mean, like when when we talk about identify the front runner and then we talk about identify a wild this definitely could be a wild card team phil you know what i mean like the seahawks surprised people last year they might surprise people this year talk about their their ads they added julian love huge giants fan i love julian love uh they added bobby wagner back to that defense who knows that defense inside and out he's a pro bowler he in that defense you know what i mean so it's just they also they drafted a, a wide receiver in the first round too right yep jackson smith and jigba yeah. So I mean it's just it's I, I think I think they did get a little bit better and I think they will compete with the, the 49ers, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I hear what you're saying middle of the pack, but I think they're they're a little bit better than that, don't you? I don't know. Yeah, they, they could be. Yeah. Um next up, the Los Angeles Rams, Super Bowl champions two years ago, had a very, very dramatic slash very injury riddled season last year. Stafford was gone, Cup was gone. Aaron Donald was gone, and the offseason made it even worse. They lost Jalen Ramsey to the Dolphins. Bobby Wagner decided to leave and go back home, and they lost Leonard Floyd, one of the defensive leaders as well. So basically that defense is gone besides Aaron Donald. And But they did add somewhat of um, some players. First of all, Matthew Stafford is healthy, somewhat healthy. Cooper Cup is healthy again. Uh, Aaron Donald is healthy again because he missed the season as well. They added Hunter Long for offensive line help because the because th- that all offensive line for the for the Rams was switching in and out like every single week, so it was, was no solidified lineup. And they added some veteran help, and that's so, in Bennett because of how old he is. Oh come on, you're gonna call the rookie a veteran already? <laughs> He's old. Think about it, John. Sony Michelle. There's a stat. Sony Michelle uh, graduated from no, sorry, left Georgia, won two Super Bowls, and retired. And Seth and Bennett became a rookie the same year. Okay. All right. Well, I, I hear that. Basically. But, like, did that you man see, is old. Did you see the last preseason game? Yeah, he, he was throwing some dimes. He, I, he was, but he also he got sacked by a guy playing in his first game ever. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, uh, uh, Okoye. Yeah, Okoye from Nigeria. They, had, they have a uh, international football program where they help find NFL talent. Yep. But it, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Um, for me, I, I mean, I love the combination of, um, Stafford and cup Sure. and Cam Akers expected to have a, a very good season. Can they stay as well? Healthy? Can, Can they, yeah. That's, healthy? that's the biggest problem. Can they stay healthy? That's honest, like Sean Payton's a great coach. Don't, yeah. don't underestimate him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But can they stay healthy? That's my question yeah. with the Rams. Um, for me, I think this team, I think they'll be battling with health though. I think they'll be a little bit better than middle of the pack. I don't think they'll be dangerous as they were two years ago because they lost so many good weapons from that team. But I think they'll be able. To, I think they'll surprise some teams this year. I don't are think they they'll. Better? I don't think they'll be considered dangerous, but they'll definitely surprise some teams. Are they better than the Seahawks? Or are they they split? That's Honestly, I would, I would give it. I would. I would give it. I would give the Rams the edge just because exactly. of Aaron Donald, Cooper Cup, and Matt Stafford. I get that. I get that. Yeah, but the, their defense is going to be shit this year. Their cornerbacks are going to get exposed. I mean, hopefully not. Hopefully Aaron Donald gets to that quarterback really fast. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the only way you're stopping the offense. If, if, Dar- if Donald gets to the quarterback fast to you know get a quarterback hurry, but no, if, if, if the quarterback who is facing the Rams have time, it's over. And this might be this might be a, a really pivotal year if Aaron Donald decides to retire. Do you know what I mean? Like if the Rams yep. don't go anywhere for the next couple of years, like done. Yeah. he might why, – why does he want to play? Do you know what I mean? Like – that's, right. I mean, that's what he said after he won the Super Bowl, but I don't know. Okay. Um, last up in the division, the 49ers, the favorite in the division. They added Hargrave from the Eagles, so a, a dangerous defense gets even more dangerous. Sam Darnold for quarterback um, 
for the quarterback room to help gain some knowledge with Trey Lance and Brock Purdy. I like that. Who Brock Purdy is now the starter, according is to he, He's coach. the official? Yep. Cool. That's what's up. Uh, they add some more defensive help at corner with Josh Oliver. They lost Jimmy G, of course. They lost Jimmy Ward, safety. And I think it might be a big – might, it might be a problem that glares here and there. They lost offensive tackle uh, Mike McGlinchey to the Broncos. So, they, they, you know, a very dangerous running team. They lost one of their best weapons in the run game, their offensive tackle in Glinchey. But I still think – I think personally that the 49ers win this division, no sweat at all. Yeah. I mean, based, compared to the other teams, they're just so talented and stacked with, with very good coaching compared to the other teams. It's, I, just, I think I think they it's a landslide here, to be honest. There'd have to be a couple injuries if uh, to to knock San Francisco off, which they've had in the past. So you know what I mean. Like I I wouldn't count it out, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. We got. Um, do you want me to go first with prediction, or you got one? Uh, yeah, you can go first. Uh, Trey Lance will be a starter by week six. Wow! Oh, I like that. I, like I think that. I think Brock Purdy. Uh, you know, he, he went undefeated last year all the way up into the Eagles game, obviously, when yeah. he got hurt. Uh, I think a little bit of that magic fades off this year. I think he'll start he'll start good, but eventually, you know, he'll because we never saw a full season from him. Sure. So I'm guessing he he hits that sophomore wall that a lot of players hit, and I think, you know, it'll be bad enough to get benched and we can finally see what Trey Lance can do because obviously we didn't see it the first year. He sat, and then second year he got injured enough for the year. So I mean he's been struggling in camp, but all he needs is a chance to prove himself, and I think he can improve himself and eventually be take over from Purdy. Yeah. So hey, we'll see how it goes with your hands. I mean, I like I like that quarterback room. I uh, I don't know if you if you follow the the 49ers kind of off mic or their social media teams or whatever, but Trey Lance, Donald. Yeah, Trey Lance has definitely been a guy who I mean, they they could go with Darnold, but I mean I think you're right. I think Trey Lance has been a guy that's been in that system, been in that room. I think they're going to go with the best guy available. And I don't, I don't think San Francisco cares. You know what I mean? Like Jimmy Garoppolo, a guy they just let go won his first six games when he came to San Francisco, you know what I mean? And he he brought that team to the playoffs multiple times and they still traded two or three assets to get a a first round pick in Trey Lance. So it's just, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, Oh, and plus you, you don't prediction. And plus, you don't use all those draft picks to not play Trey Lance. You yeah. have to. Use, you have to use them. <laughs> what do you my, got my bold prediction is uh, Seattle's going to have a top five defense this year. It's they're going to be top five. You got Julian Love, Adams if he plays, if he's not injured too much. You got Wagner going back in that defense. They've, they've got a decent D line. I mean, secondary's good too. Yeah. So I mean, like it's just yeah, it's just Tariq Woolen. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think we'll, we'll the next the third one because I think NFC North NFC North or do you want to go NFC South? I think we got to go NFC South because okay. to end on the NFC South is so lame. No offense. Yeah. So um, first up, let's talk about the team that probably will finish last in the division, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You know they were champions three years ago, and now Tom Brady's retired. Lenny Fournette is out of his prime and of no longer on the team. And they lost they, they lost a lot of players, let's be honest. Shaq Mason, they lost a lot of O-line help. They lost, they lost a lot of people in the secondary. This complete this team is completely, you know, stripped of, of, of most of its talent. But, I, mean, I mean, they have weapons of wide receiver, but that's it. You that's know it, I mean? yeah. yeah. Chris yeah. Godwin and Mike Evans are still there. Um, but they, they did add – yeah, I think so. I think they did add some talent in the offseason. Uh, they they added Chase Edmonds, former running back for the Cardinals and the Dolphins, for to, to, to replace Leonard Fournette. Uh, Baker Mayfield, who basically last year he got signed by the Rams last second and had to play a game twenty twenty four hours and beat the Raiders, and Greg Gaines from the Rams as well for a defensive tackle. So obviously, I don't see this team doing anything either. Uh, it's it you know you know how it's bad if it's Baker Mayfield or Kyle Trask on on their depth chart. So. I just see this team flip flopping quarterbacks this whole year. I don't see much coming from them. I think Mike Evans and Chris Godwin should be looking into trades immediately because they're very talented players. They don't they don't deserve to go out like this, to be honest. So I just don't see much from this Buccaneers team at all. I hear that, Phil, but they're they're leaders of this team. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's a reason why they're still on it. So I mean, I think this is a prove it year for Baker Mayfield. I think this is a very Geno type year where if he balls out and he proves people wrong and he takes this division, you know what I mean? Like he's gonna get paid. You know what I mean? He's going to get a three-year contract where he he is going to help the next 
a Buccaneers quarterback take the reins. You know what I mean? But if not, I mean, Kyle Trask will probably beat him out for the job week eight, nine. I don't know. Halfway through the season, I think. I think after they're after their bye, I haven't looked at their schedule, but I mean, I could see Kyle Trask taking taking the role. I mean, they're a third round pick that they they want to give him a shot to play. Um, if Baker can't produce, I mean, yeah, it's it, it, it's hard to pick a team where there's a quarterback question mark. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, up next, Carolina. They made a lot of moves this offseason. First off, they tr- they drafted a uh, Bryce Young. They got a new quarterback to replace Darnold and Baker because that last year quarterback was a disaster. Um, they also traded away DJ Moore. You know, wanted to move on and start their new, their new uh, their new steps towards a new franchise. They lost Dante Foreman, the running back, but they did add Miles Sanders, former running back from the Eagles, Adam Thielen to be their wide receiver one, uh, and they added they added former Bengals safety Von Bell. So. They made a lot of good moves you know, going to the future to help Bryce Young out. Some defense, some offense, some running games as well. Um, like you said, um, I have a prediction for this um, for this team, but I'll say it until we, don't, until we go over all the teams. Okay. But, um, John, how do, you, how do you feel about the, the Carolina Panthers? I feel – I thought – like I, I was feeling them a lot more before I saw the Jets-Panthers uh, preseason game in Carolina. Did you see that? Yeah. 27 nothing you couldn't you couldn't put up anything like your backups couldn't put up anything like i i'm i'm, I'm upset with the carolina panthers all right phil i i'm in a I'm, preseason I'm, game <laughs> i'm bored i'm i mean i'm just saying like i don't mean to be like that but like this is the division that anyone could take you know what i mean and like i get that you're starting you're, you're setting your starters you know what i mean or you don't want to get anyone injured or whatever but like like i don't i'm i know and i i'm i'm i just i don't i wanted to go with them but i just is Adam Thielen going to have a season? You know what I mean? He's the number one option. Is he going to have a season though? You know what I mean? Is is Bryce Young going to progress or does he not even have any weapons yet? Like is Sanders, are they going to give the ball to Sanders a lot of the time? Like I just, they have a good offensive line. So I don't know. I like this team, but they, they really worry me. <laughs> they re- they really do. I'm sorry. I know, I know I, I shouldn't be saying that after a preseason game, but like, I was honestly really thinking about taking them in the South, and I don't know if I can now. I just – after seeing them lose that bad, I don't, it's just – ugh. They made me really can't wait for week one. That's how well that game went. But yep. what, do, what, do, what do you think? Do you think them adding, like, Sanders and Thielen is going to be a difference? I mean, it's better than options they had last year minus Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. And so, um, next up, the Saints. Uh, we got they – they made some moves as well. Obviously, they lost um, Jarvis Landry. They lost Marcus Davenport, their DN, and Andy Dolan. But they do get a better quarterback in De'Aaron Carr, leaving the Raiders. Jamal Williams, I think he was like top three, top five in touchdowns last year scored. He was. He an and they not only bring back um, uh, a legend for them, Jimmy Graham, but they also grab a, a teammate of Carr's as well, Foster Moreau, tight end. So, and – we we will see what happens with Michael Thomas, but I think it's another huge year for um, Chris Olave. Uh, this Saints offense could make some noise, but we just got to see how it works because you know Dennis Allen, the last two years has not been the best coach. It's been a struggle for the Saints offensively and defensively, even though mm-hmm. they had talent on both ends. Mm-hmm. We just got to see if the coaching staff can put this team a good a good game plan together. The pieces are there, and th- this division is up for grabs. We just got to see how the coaching. And play because their car has been having a chip on his shoulder the last couple of years. Can he, you know, be a quarterback? Fra- can he be a, a franchise quarterback? Can he do this? Can he do that? But obviously, I think it's a downgrade in uh, offense going from Josh Jacobs and Devontae Adams to Michael Thomas, who might, may, or may not play, and Olave and AK, who's a spender for the first three games. But I think he, Carr will have a nice little decent season. So, how do you feel about the same? I job? mean, I really like Derek Carr as a leader. I really like him as a as a player. I think he's he's someone who can who can throw an interception, but he can also forget about it five minutes later, and that's that's not something a lot of quarterbacks can do. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I I think he's such an ad that we're really gonna see what's at, what's up with Chris Olave. You know what I mean? Like you said, he had a big year last year, right? It was his rookie year. I think yep. he has a bigger year. I think I think Chris Olave looks better than Garrett Wilson. You know what I mean? That's what a lot of people are saying. Like, if Derek Carr is that guy, he's he should look better than Derek Garrett Wilson. You know what I mean? And like, I, I don't know. I I think he's 
I, I really like Olave coming out of college. I it was either him or Garrett Wilson for me. So like, I I was really impressed with those two. So I'm just I'm interested to see what happens. I think Alvin Kamara only getting suspended for three games. I mean, they have they have the veteran leadership. You know what I mean? They have they have people on the defense. Their defense has been together. You know what I mean? So it just they can they put it all together? And this is a team that keeps betting on itself. Like they're they're in the hole for money each year. They got to cut people. They got to completely re- rework their roster, and they they keep somehow competing or being one or two in their division. So, and now they're going to have a huge distraction with John Gruden helping Derek Carr as a quarterback specialist or co- coach specialist as well. So, that's that's I mean, it, it probably will be. You know, so they're you know how our reporters are. You see something that can like you know be news headline worthy. It's like. How do you feel about? They're probably gonna ask Derek Carr about how do you feel about John Gruden being on the Saints almost every week. Sure, I mean, I they could do that, but I think, I think a big thing in this, and I think that one of the reasons why I'm glad if any quarterback it's Derek Carr is he's he's an outward professional. He'll he'll be as honest or as willing to answer as many media questions as possible, but he's also not that athlete that like has to answer every single question. He'll say, I've already answered your question. Come on. Like, I don't I think he'll come off genuine. Right. I think, and I think if the players move on, you know what I mean? Or if the players are okay with it, they'll be okay. With it. I think it, and if you'll, I think we'll see if, if they lose and they're not okay with it, John Gruden won't stay with the team. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't think the, the saints are really, you know what I mean? Like would they, would they risk a season over John Gruden? You know what no. I mean? Being a distraction. That's what I mean. Like I, right. I'd fire him tomorrow. If yeah. It was that big of, and now uh, the last team in the NFC South that we're talking about, probably the busiest team that this offseason. They had a good draft. Bijan Robinson is a Falcon. So sh- shout out. Electrifying offense is getting even more electrifying. Um, but they did have a busy offseason, but they did lose some players. Josh Oliver is a cornerback. So it'll now be A.J. Terrell basically by himself. We'll see how the other cornerbacks perform. Marcus Mariota uh, got driven out of his job. And line- they lost linebacker Rashawn Evans. But they did add – some veteran QB leadership in Tyler Heineke. So just in case Desmond Ritter doesn't show up, I mean, uh, he, Tyler Heineke, whether you want, whether good or bad, what do you want to say about him? He's been a nice spark plug for anyone that needs a, a QB. I like Heineke. I do. But yeah, commanders I, last year, they're decent. I, I also think they should stick with Ritter. Yeah, they should. And until until it's like horrible, you know what I mean? Like until yeah. it's like really bad. Right. Because Phil, I mean. This is this is a question that's plagued me because we don't really talk about fantasy because like we we draft very close to each other a lot of the years we play in fantasy. But this is the question I've been waiting to ask all offseason. How do you really think Robinson's gonna do? Do you think he's gonna have a Kyle Pitts esque rookie year of a downward of projected because everyone's hyping him up? Or do you think he's actually gonna produce and he's gonna be a player mm. like Barkley or like Ezekiel Elliott when he kinda came out? You know what I mean? Like I mean, it's between him, Gibbs, and uh, the Miami running back, honestly, that I think this running back class is going to do. And last year we saw with uh, with the Brees, you know what I mean? So, like, I just I'm, – I'm excited to see who's going to be that number one rookie running back. And, I mean, do you – that's my question. Do you think it's going to be him? Do you think it's going to be Robinson? Does he does – I, 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 I think he's going to have – I think he's going to have a good year. Okay. Do you think Kyle Pitts' numbers go up too because he has a good year? Yes, but the problem is with Kyle Pitts and Julio Jones. We've, we've seen okay yardage, but they're gonna they're gonna try to they're gonna body him so much he's gonna have he's gonna struggle scoring touchdowns. So I mean, it's gonna be tough. But they also added defensive help as well to help out um, AJ Terrell. They added safety from the Bengals. A Bengals lots both their safeties in the same year, Jesse mm-hmm. Bates and Von Bell. But the Falcons get Jesse Bates to help that defense out because. That's one of the plagues they've been had, having the last couple of years. And they add veteran help and uh, defensive end, Calais Campbell. So the Falcons made a lot of moves. I mean, they're they're inching closer and closer to becoming, you know, a very, very dangerous team. And, and Ritter's young. He he did well at Cincinnati. Do you know what I mean? So it's just like right. I it's, he's not someone that we should take lightly. And I mean, we don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, we yeah. I mean, I'm I'm guessing we all predict it's gonna be car to, to win this division, but I mean, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the Falcons like were, were also like in contention of winning okay. the, the, okay. the, the division the last couple be. of weeks. Yeah, they could be. It's it's a it's a throw up division. You know what I mean? This is a division yeah. Tom Brady struggled in. Last it makes year. me want to throw up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, but uh, my prediction for the division: the Panthers will be fighting for a division spot 
in the last couple weeks or so, like the last two or three weeks. I think they'll be in that fight until the last three weeks because, yes, this team may be young, but they do have some veterans on the team, Thielen, Von Bell, et cetera, et cetera. But, and we we don't know how good or bad this division is yet. It could be terrible. It could be, you know, some, it could be something no one expected. But I believe with how – how weak this division is, I do think it'll be anyone's game, including the Panthers, until the very end of the season. So that'll be okay. my prediction. I don't, okay. I don't think, I don't know if they'll win the division, but I think they'll be in the fight for it. You're gonna, you're so, so you're saying because they added in free agency and the draft, this team got a lot better. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. I like that. Good, enough, good, good enough. Good enough to fight for the division lead. Okay. I'd say. Um... I'd say Kyle Trask gets in a quarterback this year for the Buccaneers. I don't think Baker Mayfield holds it. Do you want to say how soon? How do you think how soon? How early? I don't want to be disrespectful, but week six. Oh damn. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe not. I think they one of the big transfers of powers is the buy. So, I mean, I could look up. Let me let me look up their schedule. But I just I don't know. I just Tampa Bay. I mean, this this they did lose a lot of veterans, so I mean, it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But their buy isn't until I don't even know. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, no, oh, but so yeah, okay, that's not a bad, it's not bad because you know Trask and Baker Mayfield probably can go back and forth. So hey, I, if they change, if they want to see what the rookie got, I would be surprised. Mm-hmm. Or second year player, sorry. Um, our last division, NFC North. Aaron Rodgers is no longer a part of this division, so a lot of a lot of people, a lot of teams in this team in this division is, is jumping for joy because now he's a Jet, so it's a win-win for everybody except well, for the Packers. I, well, I mean, I don't know if it's a win-win for everybody because I think I think the biggest loser, if it's not Green Bay, it might be Minnesota. Do you know what I mean? They lost a lot of depth and a lot of good players too. Yep. So hey, I mean, let's, let's start off with them. Um, they lost Darius Smith, former Packer, one of their best defensive players in the, mm-hmm. in, in, in the team. Uh, Delvin Cook, who is now a Jet. That's right. Um, and Adam Thielen, who is now a Panther. So they lost some offense but and defense, but they did gain some offense and defense as well. Uh, DJ Reader, linebacker. So the linebacker helped press Anthony Barr and others. Uh, Marcus Davenport from the Saints to add some defensive end help. Byron Murphy to add some secondary help. And to replace Adam Thielen, they drafted Jordan Addison. Wide receiver to help you know go be the number two alongside Justin Jefferson. So, I mean, I think this team will still most likely win the division, in my opinion. Okay. Just because Justin Jefferson, Kirk Cousins, they have the better team out of everyone left, just by default. And I think they, they this team has you know spent a lot of time together. So I think team chemistry will be one of the factors that helps them win the division this year. Sure. I I think I think that's a big play, but. Yeah, okay. I like that. Uh if I had to if I had to say anything about this team, I think Kirk Cousins is not someone to take lightly. I, or Justin Jefferson. Um I don't know if Madison has a great year. I think Elijah thinks he's gonna have a great year. He might. Uh I don't know. I'm I ha I haven't seen exactly what he's done for more than three straight games. You know what I mean? Like at running back. So I I wanna say it's between them and Detroit. Do you know what I mean? Like, I say we go to Detroit next because, like, I don't know. I I, I get that Minnesota really is, like, the the most veteran and the most, like, like known in this division. But I think last year when Detroit knocked Green Bay from going to the playoffs, that team momentum, you know what I mean, was infectious enough to to carry over to this year. So, I mean, what do you you think? Do you you want to go to – do you want to go to Detroit next or do you want to go to Green Bay next? Can you hear me? Uh, I think we probably change, change. I'll put Detroit for last because I think they're okay. the most interesting team. Can you hear me? Okay, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Yeah, can you Am hear good? me? I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Sorry. It's it's a little bit of um Wi-Fi problem. It's a little static. Okay. Sorry. I was um, I was just saying that I think if let's, it's, start with, if it's, let's start with Green Bay. Okay. Got you. Uh, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think I, losing, 
Oh, do you want to go first or? You can go first. Am I good now? How, how is it like yeah, laggy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're good now. Yeah, yeah, I just didn't know. Could, uh, you, could you hear what I said at the end of? Could you hear what I said at the end yeah. of Minnesota? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, Green Bay, they lost a lot. Um, obviously, they're going through a transition period. Aaron Rodgers is no longer your quarterback. You also lost Alan Lazard, Rob Tunyon. You lost a lot of pieces. Randall Cobb, et cetera, et cetera. Just because the whole transition of from trying to make playoffs to we've, we're finally getting into the rebuilding process. Jordan Love is not your quarterback, but you also added some pieces. Um, you added um, Mr. Nixon. To, I think he's the wide receiver as well. Uh, Tar, Tar Moore for some defense. And they added a line snapper. Yeah, not a lot of you know additions to report on for the Packers, but uh, an addition is an addition nonetheless. But you still have Jordan Love. You still have Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon. But I think this team's probably going to finish last in the division. Not going to lie to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, probably last. I don't know. I there like I said. There's nothing. There's really not that much to talk about with the the Packers other than their losses. I mean, when you lose a whole offense and a rookie quarterback steps up, I mean, I'm wondering where what Packers fans are thinking about this season, Phil. You know what I mean? Like Aaron Rodgers' first two seasons weren't that great in Green Bay, and his third season really where he took off. So, like, I don't know. Do they win seven games this year? You know what I mean? I doubt it. That's what I'm that you know what I mean? And that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, because they could wreck this quarterback. If they don't if they don't add pieces and start adding depth, like they're not really known for adding anything other than the draft. You know what I mean? They don't really add during free agency. You were talking about a long snapper. So I mean, it's I don't know. It's 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 gonna be interesting to see what happens with them. But yeah, I, I they're probably last. Yep. Uh next up, Chicago Bears. This team was very busy in offseason as well. They lost David Montgomery, though, the running back. They lost, um, I think, Andrew Reef or Ryan Reef at right tackle. So they lost some offensive line help, which is very important. Uh, they, also, they also lost linebacker Nick Morrow as well. So, so some defense they lost as well. But they added um, offensive guard Nate Davis. Uh, they added Tremaine Edmonds from the Bills. So they replaced linebacker help with even better a better linebacker in Tremaine Edmonds from the Bills. And they have... A number one, a good number one, a reliable number one for Justin Fields, aka DJ Moore from the Panthers. So I mean, I like the, I like the offseason from the Bears. Um, you get Justin Fields some help, you get some line help, you get some um, defensive help, and you get him, get him, give him another weapon to throw to. Because him, Claypool, and I think Cole Komet should be you know a nice trio to work with. But obviously, there's no more moves to be made. But I could see a lot of you know pizzazz and a lot of showmanship from the Bears. I think they'll give some teams some run, but I think this will be a lot of a uh, cool moments for the Bears. I don't think they'll be too competitive, but I think they'll be in there. They'll be in a lot of games, but I think the trouble is going to be winning those games. They'll they'll have some highlights though. Okay, so but do you think they do you think they could challenge for the division? Do you think they could get? Are they a third or fourth or second? I think they're third. Okay. Yeah. This still needs a little bit more. I think they could be the Detroit Lions of last year. Do you know what I mean? Out of slow and finish hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a team that probably not going to make the playoffs, but a team that if you could keep the momentum going into next year, you know what I mean? Like that'd be awesome. That'd be that'd be great. I mean, I think DJ Moore. I I kind of can't wait to see what happens with that Bears offense. You know what I mean? But and I think Tremaine Edmonds them them uh, adding him as well. Uh, it's just a huge a huge plus. But I mean, I don't know. I. I think I think you're right, Phil. I think they're probably third too. Yeah. And then the team that a lot of people are buzzing about this offseason. Me. Uh, the Detroit Lions. They lost some players, of course. Jeff Okuda, former third third overall pick, cornerback, got traded to the Falcons. DJ Chark, wide receiver, he's gone as well. And they lost their running back tandem duo of DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams. DeAndre Swift to, to the Philadelphia Eagles and Jamal Williams to the Saints. But they added some offensive line help and getting offensive lineman um, Glasgow. I forgot his first name, but definitely a reliable offensive lineman. They got safety Cam Sun, I believe, from the Steelers. And they traded in for a younger, well, somewhat younger uh, running back duo and David Montgomery from the Bears. So he stayed in the division. And they got Alabama running back Jameer Gibbs. Uh, this offense is looking pretty good right now. I mean, there's what? There's Goff. There's Jameson Williams. There's Gibbs. There's... 
Uh, I forgot who replaced uh, TJ Hawkinson, but he's gone. But they have, they're have looking to replace him, someone at tight end. And they have, I think, someone who's going to make a lot of noise this year, Amon Ross St. Brown at wide receiver. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Jared Goff throws four, four, 4,500 yards or 4,000 4, yards. Sure. So, I mean, it's, it's very possible that this offense can be very explosive. And the, the defense, led by Aiden Hutchinson, can also be very, very explosive as well. We just got to see if they put it together because bit by bit, they've been improving every year. We're just waiting on the year they put it all together and like, shock some people. They could be the playoffs this year as well. They're, they're, think, they're, they're second favorite to, to win the division. I think this is the year. Like, I mean, I'm, I, I really do. I really think this is the year for the Lions, just because, like, like it almost, it almost feels like how the Jets felt last year, where it's like we're coming up, we're coming up, we're coming up, but do we have a quarterback? You know what I mean? And Zach Wilson was not our answer last year, and I, I think Jared Goff has been there and been with the progression, and he is that quarterback, and I think them bolstering the offensive line just I I mean as an offensive lineman uh that was like that's that's my number one thing like my offensive line coach in high school uh went to uh went to this uh like it, it was a d1 but it was a d1 like level two kind of a thing uh so he played with like some like like NFL players or whatever and like they had – he was there for four years. They had 4,000-yard uh, rushing years with four different running backs. You know what I mean? So, like, he, when he would tell those stories, he'd be like, it doesn't matter who's in your backfield. It matters what you do in your assignments. You know what I mean? So, them taking care of their offensive line is a great sign for me. And, I mean, I I really like the Lions. I, I think the Lions – if they if they smack around Minnesota, if they win one out of two, they might take this division. It, so – what would your hot take for this division? Or yeah, I think I think I think they beat Minnesota, and I think I think they take. I know we're we're going to talk about who wins the division later. I know that's that's a little, uh, whatever. But it's just, I, I, I mean, does the rookie get over a thousand yards? Is he a thousand yard rusher? I think he is. I think Gibbs is. Maybe not. I mean, that's maybe that is a stretch, but okay. I think the Lions definitely take this division. Gotcha. Um, for me. Uh, bold prediction. I think Jordan Love makes some noise this year. Okay. Uh, he probably does. You have, you have Christian Watson. You have Romeo Dobbs. You still have your running backs and Aaron Jones and uh, A.J. Dillon. He's been looking decent in uh, preseason. And I think he does a little bit better than everyone expects him to. But I expectations think I, are down. Yeah, expectations are low. Uh, I think he has a good season. Obviously, he's going to have his growing pains as first year being a starter. And, but you did have a chance to learn under Aaron Rodgers. You might, you, I think he's going to show some flashes. It, it's not going to be a perfect season or an amazing season or even good season. But I think he'll have some moments where he he wows, he wows you and thinking maybe he can you know lead this team if he gets better uh, offensive weapons and better team down the road. So that's my prediction. So you're rooting for him. You think you think it's it's a legit recipe? Like this is if. If that happens, this is this is like the legit Green Bay blueprint. All right, we're gonna have a Hall of Fame quarterback. All right, we're gonna draft someone super before this guy is about to retire. We're gonna make him sit on the team for about three years, and then we're gonna somewhat exile the potential starter that is a Hall of Famer. You know what I mean? Who's only won one Super Bowl for the next guy up? Within two years, he'll be that guy. You think that's well, like Green Bay? Are you with the Green Bay way? Please draft wide receivers for this man, please, <laughs> please. First round, if you have if you have a good pick to grab a wide receiver, a talented wide receiver, grab him, please. <laughs> if you want to help Jordan Love, do that. I mean, yeah, I hear what you're saying, Phil, but yeah, but I, hey, I think I don't think he'll have an amazing season, but I think he'll surprise some people. No, but do you, do you, do you feel what I'm saying? Like, do you think you think the Green Bay way is going to happen, or do you think I don't think he'll win a, a Super Bowl? Okay, not yet, at least, but. Um, but I think he'll, he'll, have, he'll have some positive development. Okay. All right. Love that. Okay. That's our outlook. Um, we got two quick activities before we head out. We're going to do a grid challenge because uh, last week, you know, we missed one. So here's a shot to redeem ourselves. So Wait, wait Phil. Can we go back and can we pick who do we think, like, bold predictions, who's going to win the division real quick before we leave? That's going to be our that's gonna be our season predictions. Oh, yeah. my bad. My bad. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's gonna be like our division winners slash playoff playoff actor. Yeah. Yeah, my bad. Sorry about that. All good. So hey, our last week, me and John were one pick short from finishing the grid, but I think this time, I think we've got it. 
Let me know what pops up for you. I don't know. Phil, you got me one with the Eagles? Yeah. So, the top ones, Broncos, Panthers, and five passing touchdowns in one game since 1999. And the the left one is Eagles, Steelers, and Bears. Oof. (laughs) Five passing touchdowns in one game. Okay. If there's anyone who's done it, it it would be – It'd be McNabb, right? I was thinking Nick Foles. You can you can take. Oh no, Carson Wentz. Sorry, Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz. You did he do it? Remember okay. the MVP year? I'm Eli, a, Man- I'm- Eli Manning's only thrown two uh, five touchdown games in his whole career. I was at the first one. Gotcha. Do you want to try Carson Wentz? Because I, I believe he did it. I do not. I but um, you do you. Oh, did not do it. That's right, McNabb. It is. Oh, and okay, it is McNabb? What the hell? I thought he did. I thought Carson once had that. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe McNabb never did it, but I'm pretty sure he's he was with the Eagles for so long he probably had one. No. Nope. Oh, there he is. Okay. There, he is. there you go. So yeah, so we started off with an L like last week. Fame. It's all good. Don't worry about it. I could I could have sworn Carson once had that one amazing game. No. Okay. Yeah. Um yeah. did Ben Roethlisberger ever have a five passing touchdown game? Yeah, that's who I'd go with. If, if there's one, it'd be him. Yep, easy. He's the only one. Yeah, that's so, like ninety-four percent. The Bears. Uh, Jay, Jay Cutler. Cutler? That's what I'm, yeah, that's, that's the only option I think. Nope. nope. Okay. Uh, let's skip that. Uh, let's yeah, go. Five uh, yeah, I know. All right, oh. down two blocks. Do you got one? Eagles, Panthers, Miles Sanders. Sure. Hopefully, it's updated. I was going to say Brian Dawkins for uh, Broncos, Eagles. We can do that after. Yeah. No, wait. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. What? Uh, b- before the preseason games, technically no one's played for them. Well, I mean, it, it worked for this. Okay, good. Because it didn't work on my phone. I was like, bro, what the hell? It, like, I put in an option like that and it just didn't put in. I was like, what the hell? Brian Dawkins, um, Broncos, Steelers, Broncos, Steelers, Broncos, Bears. Oh, there's someone on the tip of my tongue. Oh, uh, Bears and Panthers, DJ Moore. Got you. That works. Where is he? Uh, D.J. Oh, D.J. Oh, wait, no. Why, where's wide receiver D.J. Moore? Is he on this list? Should be. What the hell? That is weird. Herman Moore. Well, I don't think he's on this list. What the hell? That's weird. Okay. Uh, Steelers and Panthers. Someone went to my tongue. I just don't know. No, Broncos and Steelers. Did not, didn't know, not Ryan Clark. Uh, Rashard Mendenhall, did he play for the Broncos? Yeah, he did. Damn. Oh, he did not. He did not. (laughs) And we have two guesses left. Well, we stuck. We we did worse than last year. <laughs> we stuck last year. It's all right. Uh, Broncos, Bears, Panthers, Bears. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Julius Peppers. Julius Peppers. That's For... what I'm my tongue. Uh, Panthers, uh, Bears. Okay, so we have one guest left. Who could throw five passing touchdowns in one game for the Bears? Who's that? Oh, oh Mc, McMahon. What? The, the quarterback yeah, that was of- after 1999. That was an 18-something. Oh, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like... Cutler. Uh, uh, no. uh, Bears in Denver. Let's Did go, Trubisky uh, ever do that? No, uh, Brandon Marshall. For which one? Didn't, didn't Brandon Marshall play for uh, the Bears and... Uh, Yep. The uh, Broncos, like uh, Jay Cutler did. Yep, you're right. Yeah. And this is probably the last guess, too. 
Yep. Yeah. Hey, yeah, that's great. Not bad. That's all right. Yeah. I mean, hey, there's always next time. Thanks. So, Elijah, we miss you. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> okay. So, that is our grid for the week. Let us know how we did. And let me know the answers that you guys could think of for the Broncos, Steelers, Steelers, P- Panthers, and Bears five passing touchdowns on one game since 1999. We'll look that up after the show. Yeah. Yeah, that was oof. that was rough, but hey, let's see it. That was super rough. Okay, and now to close out the show, we have a uh, best of NFC draft. Basically, anyone that of all time that played for the NFC conference. So, I, did you go first last time? Uh, I don't know. Maybe so. You can go first. Yes, I'll want. go first. Okay. Um, sure. you're not gonna so pick a player I'm picking anyway. So, do we do we want? Five picks. Each. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I don't even want to talk no more. You know what? What? Whatever. All right. Understandable. Uh, you know, I was actually yeah. Okay. I had to. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. You know, you can go with. You know, I wasn't even going to take him the first time. I was going to take him the second. You know, but you know, to be nice because I wasn't going to be biased. So I'll, I'll go Sean Taylor. All right. <laughs> Last from the past, Sean Taylor. Yeah, definitely a huge uh, Go ahead. I had Jesus. to. I, I want to see your reaction. I'm oh, my sorry. God. Of course you picked Lawrence. That's because Bill Belichick coached probably the two best players of all time. Absolutely. Whatever. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Jerry Rice. Okay. That's a Who's good one. Is? That's a good one. I mean, I mean, uh, Jerry Rice. Okay. I'm, I'm between a couple people. Uh, uh. Oh, uh, Barry Sanders for the Lions. Damn. I know, sorry. He's just so damn good. Um, For me... Um, let me go with... Oh, let me go with Walter Payton. Bears. Okay. All right. All right. That's a solid one. That's a solid one. Hold on. Who do you have? I have uh, Lawrence Taylor, uh, Jerry Rice, and Walter Payton. I have Sean Taylor, and I have – who did I just say? Sorry. Sean Taylor. Uh, and, well, Barry Sanders. My bad. Barry Sanders, yeah. So that's uh, your pick. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's my pick. Uh, man, there's a couple. Um, I'm going to go uh, Dion. I'm going to go Dion. Yeah. Oh, that was my next pick. Yeah. Yeah, Dion. Um, this was a fan favorite for number four. Uh, someone I liked to watch play in the NFC. Um, Brian Urlacher. Okay. Brian Urlacher. Favorite linebackers of all time. Fan favorite. Okay. Um, that's interesting. I'm going to go fan favorite. Shit, I'm going to go with the player I've met. I'm going to go Eli Manning. Two Super Bowls. Baby. I like that. I like him. Sorry, I just you know, gotta share the love to Eli. Actually, actually, I'm gonna take back the Eli one just because I love him so. I'm much. not picking Eli number five, so you can have him. No, 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 no. no. But I, what I'm saying is, like, I'm gonna go with his the guy he brought up, Victor Cruz, from New Jersey, undrafted free agent. You know what I mean? Won a Super Bowl, created the salsa in New York. You know what I mean? As a dance move. So I'm just yeah, I'm gonna go with Victor Cruz next. Sorry about that. Okay, so the last pick. For the last pick, I'm going with one of the best players to ever play for the NFC. Championships won, awards won, and you know, you know, who, you know, what I'm talking about, right, John? I don't. Oh, you're talking about Tom Brady. But Tom ahead. Brady. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. NFC legend, seven times Super Bowl winner, last one with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFC. Give me Tom Brady as my last That's pick. That's a good. That's a good pick. That's a good last pick. I mean, I, I like. I wanted you to have Tom. You know what I mean? It's. I mean. <sighs> Let's see. I mean, Tom Brady was a good pick. I mean, I'm NFC I'm legend. Proud. Tom Brady. He is. He is an NFC legend. Uh, you know what? Mm. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with a player that uh, I threw some disrespect to until I actually started listening to him a little bit more. Uh, and I'm gonna go Randy Moss. So I'm gonna go Randy Moss. I was I'm debating a, on adding top, top three wide receiver of all time. Uh, you know what I mean? Amazing guy. Uh, just like he, a lot of people underestimated this dude just because he, he has a country accent. You know what I mean? And like, he's he's one of the best wide receivers of all time. Definitely top. Three. Absolutely. 
So hey, here that's our draft. Let us know uh, how we did down below. Let us know who, who are your favorite NFC players of all time. There's a lot of names that wasn't said. Do you have an honorable mention? Um, Terrell Owens. Damn it, that was my honorable mention. Uh, all right. Uh, honestly, just because just because he's scary as hell, I'd probably go uh, Brian Dawkins. Yeah, I I was that. scary. Also, another one, Devin Hester. Hester was pretty damn good. Okay. Oh, Julio Jones, too. Okay. Sure. Okay. So, hey, that's our draft. Make sure you check all the drafts down below in the podcast segments. And we'll see you in the next video, whatever it is. It probably will be a podcast segment. Check out our playlist. We'll see you in the next video. This is. So, <laughs> with that being said, that's the podcast. About an hour and 10 minutes, you know, making good time out here. Uh, since you know we're prepping for N- NFL season, um, and last words before we head out, uh, I'm excited for the prediction episode in two weeks. I mean, talking NFC was fun, you know what I mean, but talking AFC is going to be really fun next week. And like, I mean, I don't know. It just it's 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 exciting time. It's exciting time for football. Uh, we're still we're still working on our bets, our personal bets. So we're gonna have you stay tuned for that. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm just. Excited to keep taking pictures and talking sports with you guys. It was an honor to talk Phil, missing Elijah, of course. But uh, I think uh, I think me and Phil were talking about that a little bit before the show. We want to have uh, more people on. Like, we want to have some guest hosts, too, throughout NFL season. So, Absolutely. Uh, you know, Lawrence from IBT is always welcome. Anyone from IBT is always welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some variety. Maybe, maybe we'll have some of the fancy football members on as well. Exactly. So, I mean, uh, it's going to be exciting. I'm excited for our draft uh, coming up. Uh, this Saturday. Yep. So, uh, stay tuned for that. I'm doing a lot of studying into that. Phil, uh, pass it to you. Okay. Happy podcast. Um, for me, hey, another week with me and John. It's back-to-back weeks with me and John, you know, holding the ship together. Uh, hey, our, our bread and butter is here, NFL and NBA, because, you know, b- baseball, you know, we don't talk about it much, but we do enjoy the sport. But – the stuff that gets us passionate, the stuff that gets us, you know, going on rants, the stuff that makes us enjoy the sports in general is always football and basketball, our two favorites on the podcast. So we're excited that's coming back. We got football in September starting and then October basketball. So um, just a reminder, speaking of football, Madden season is here. I have early access, so I'll, I will be streaming um, Madden here and there. So make sure you check, look out, check out the Twitch channel, Ball Central 4. After this recording, I do some editing, and then I will be streaming a little bit of it tonight which is we're going to be streaming on a tuesday night so just make sure you put us on notifications and and uh on twitch so you know when we go live i got some ideas for some series for madden maybe a superstar series where you can play the draft combine so we'll see how that turns out uh maybe some franchises of course ultimate team as well so i'm excited to see how madden goes for me this year and in 2k is right around the corner in september so I'm excited for for the gaming channel. Me and Elijah got some stuff cooking up, and we're still waiting on John to make an appearance on the gaming channel. Oh yeah, hell yeah, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. I've been, I, I'm let me let me let me start off with fantasy first because I'm I've been nervous. All right, Phil Phil somehow got to pick next to me again this year. That's what he told me, and I've been having nightmares for the last three. Yeah, nights, it could be right? before, it could be after. I'm not gonna tell you where. Oh my god. So it's it's the second straight year in a row, guys. So I mean, hope okay. hope hey, for the Saturday. Just a reminder. We will be live during that draft, during the fantasy football draft. It's Saturday at 8.30, so I'll probably go live around 7.30 or 8 to stream the draft. So stay tuned for that to see how myself, John, Elijah, and others pick. Hope so, John, don't go into the stream. Actually, you'll probably be joining us in the stream. So, you know, it'll be my draft board probably on there. So I probably won't, like, add to the queue so you'll know who I pick. But I'm excited to see how our live draft goes. So um, anything else before I head out? I think I think we're good. I think we're set, right? Gotcha. So just a reminder, the Ball Central Podcast is going to be hitting a stride. NFL and NBA season coming very soon. we got a couple more prediction podcasts before the season actually begins two or three weeks away. Just a reminder, if you want to see us, um, you know, or listen to us down below, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. And, hey, make sure you put notifications on on YouTube so you know when we upload. And follow us on TikTok. We got a lot of good videos coming out. Uh, clips on the show, um, reactions to certain to news because we're gonna try to be better on that. You know, dropping news. Also, just random stuff. Maybe like we're gonna do something with fantasy football as well. Maybe like who would you draft? Who would you not draft? 
So stay tuned. We have a lot of stuff cooking up for the NFL and NBA season. I can't wait to show it. Me and John and Elijah are, are very excited for the season. And, so, and yeah. Phil, I think we can still do some fantasy football videos after we draft. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Well, well, yeah, we'll do stuff for YouTube, for, for TikTok, et cetera, et cetera, shorts. Um, our reactions to the draft, our draft grades as well. So, yeah, we, we have a lot of ideas going for the NFL season, fantasy football, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe some press conferences like what me and Elijah did a couple weeks ago. So, with that being said, the Ball Central Podcast, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Baller Central. Yeah.